Hey everyone, welcome to our uh, May 5th prayer night. I'm Nick Gibson, our lead pastor. Um, we're going to have a fairly simple prayer time. We're going to have a some worship. We'll have communion in the first third of our service. So if you need to get um, bread and wine or juice, this is a great time to get it right now um, so that you're ready because it's the very next thing we're going to do after the first worship song. So we're going to pray a little bit, have worship song, have a communion and personal time where we're going to pray and confess and repent or whatever we need to do to turn our hearts to God fully. And then we'll have a time where we'll rotate between prayer and, um, and worship songs. And we're going to pray for ourselves and our neighbors, and then for our city and its officials, and our state and its officials, and our federal government and its officials. And then we're going to pray for the church, what the church is doing, our missions partners, and God growing us in godliness during this time. So I hope you're excited about that, to just focus on the Lord and what he's doing in us and in our church together um, for just the next few minutes. Let's start with prayer, and then we'll sing. God, thanks um, that we can, in multiple places— come together and pray to you. We know that your scriptures says that there, that there are things we don't have because we, won't, we don't ask you. Um, the scripture says that when the poor calls out to you for justice, you work on our behalf. But doesn't assume that unless we turn to you that you'll help us. Um, you, it's, we, we believe that it was your choice to call us and demand from us that we would li- literally directly turn our hearts to you and ask you for what we need and respond to you for what you've done, and trust you in the rituals that you've given us, like the Lord's Supper, so that we wouldn't be people who say that we believe, who honor you with our lips, but our hearts are far from you. Father, we pray that you would turn our hearts towards you in repentance, in all the injustices that we participate in, that would, that would keep you from responding to us, like it says in Isaiah 1. We don't want any blood on our hands that is unrepented of and are unturned away from. Whether it's whether it's cultural in our society, whether it's in our home, where it says in First Peter that if we treat our, our wife with, without honor and roughly that you won't listen to our prayers. We pray that you'd help us in this time of communion to repent of all the things that turn us away from you and turn our hearts to you entirely. And we pray, Father, that you would lead us in that work. We pray that as we sing, that you would help us to give our concentration and our adoration to you fully. And as we pray, we pray that you'd guide us in praying the way you would want us to pray the way Jesus would pray if he was sitting right next to us, vocally being our high priest. Holy Spirit, inspire us and move us to pray that way. And help us to, in so doing, love each other, love you, and to love our neighbors. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. My name is Nicole Kai. I'm a part of the staff team here on the worship team. This is Jason and Chad, and we're excited to get to worship God together with you. If you've been with us on Sunday mornings, then you've heard Nick say this before, that it might feel silly that you're in your home singing, but that right now what is important is that we are giving our attention and our devotion to God. And so if that means singing even when you feel silly about it, we want to encourage you to do that. But if that means using this time to also pray And not to sing out loud, but to continue to worship God as you give him adoration through prayer during a song, then do that too, um, or do that instead. But again, this is a time for us to give our, our attention and our devotion and worship to him. So let's do that together.
Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm glad to be here with you tonight. One of the pastors here at High Point. Last week, I spent several days at the Q Virtual Conference. And while not denying it was COVID-19 that caused the virtual portion of the conference, they used a different term. They kept calling it, we're in reset. And the driving thought was the notion that two months ago, all of us were busy. Most of us were too busy to add the things we knew we needed to add into our schedule. So God took away our schedule. And now we have time. But the question is, what are we doing with that time? We're in between that place where we're kind of over that we're in it. We know it, but we don't know when we're going to get out of it. And so we're just abiding in this space. And for some, it's uncomfortable. For some, it's great. One of the people on the telecast asked the question, is God getting louder or is the noise around us getting quieter? That we can actually hear God now. The first Sunday of virtual services, Nick asked a question, and I think it was too early for us to really hear what that question was. But he said, COVID-19 is going to take something from us, but what are you going to take from COVID-19? And at the time, COVID-19 was the noise, and we heard that, and we wondered what work was going to look like. We wondered how in the world we were going to handle kids at home and, and schedules that no longer were there, and it was confusing. But now we've had time to listen to the voice of God and to realize that he is beckoning us to something. And tonight as we pray, I just want to ask you, what's he beckoning you to do? You know, we're all going to have an opportunity to really establish what's important to us and build our new schedules around it. Or we cannot. And we can just allow the old schedule to consume us again. But I think for most of us, we're finding out that a quiet time is actually nice. Games with kids at the tables, probably good. Talking with people we just haven't connected to in a long time is, is a great thing. Spending time with God on a walk is a better thing. And we're finding out that, that God's calling us not just to a different life, but a better life. One that we were meant to live in Him. Tonight we're going to take communion. And we always can frame communion a little bit different because there are so many things that communion opened the door for us to do. First off, we, we've always got to remember that, that God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And, and that death was, was horrid, and it took the place where we didn't have to. And so we eat the bread to remind us. We drink the cup to remind us that there was bloodshed in it. And that blood covers our sins. We're forgiven. We're free. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul opens up the picture of what Jesus was doing for us and, and how he wanted us to remember that. I want us to remember that tonight, but also during this next song as you take communion there at home, that you'll take the time to pause and to ask God, what's he saying to you? What's he asking you to step into before we step, step back into the craziness? What's he calling you into? What's he want to change? What's the opportunity to change? Maybe you've been doing great, and it's just the opportunity to come a little closer. But I think for all of us, there's a beckoning to him that it's a little more intimate. And so I want to pray over the elements now, the bread and the cup. And you're welcome to take them with me after I pray, or you can take them in the next song before we step into the next section of prayer. But Father, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son Jesus. And for the life that that opened to those who believe, those who have accepted, we are so grateful. And yet, we've all gotten busy. And the busyness is, has shaped us in ways that sometimes aren't healthy, and so we repent of that. But during this reset, you've given us opportunity to reestablish what's important and then to build the schedule around those things. 
And I pray that you'd help us to do that, to remind us to do those things. So, Father, we're grateful tonight for Jesus. We're grateful for what the life you've called us into. We're grateful for the Holy Spirit that empowers us to live that life. And we don't take these, this cup and, and the bread lightly because we know there was a real price. But we also take it with joy because now we have a life that we were meant to live as you created us to be not drowned out by the noise and anxiety, but instead aware of what you're doing in the life that you've called us to and the good news that we can share with those around us. Father, forgive us when our eyes are off of you, for that's anxiety. Help us to keep our eyes on you and let you overwhelm us and satisfy us. In Jesus' name, amen.
So our, our direct prayer time is going to be really simple. Um, we will pray for ourselves and our neighbors. Then we're going to pray for public authorities in the city, state, and government which, under which we live. And then we're going to pray for the spiritual movement we're a part of, High Point Church, God growing faith and godliness in his people, and our mission partners around the world. The only thing I want to say, and you can pray just by yourself, or if you're with people, it's, I think it's better to pray with people. The, the emphasis in the scriptures on prayer is praying together. It's one of the reasons why we have people to pray with you every Sunday morning for you to come up and pray with. It's the reason why you can pray with somebody on the live feed, usually like on Sunday morning services, because the emphasis in scripture is to pray with other people. So if there's other people there, I want to encourage you to utilize them. But you, and you can pray um, through the prayer time, and then if you're still praying into the music, it's okay to keep praying or to go back and forth intermittently. In the first prayer time, when we pray for um, ourselves and our neighbors, I'm going to encourage you to pass by the desires quickly and get into Jesus' prayer request for you and your neighbors. So we're going to sing first. And then I'll come back and we'll start that time together.
few minutes, we're going to pray for ourselves, that is you and the people in the room with you, and your neighbors, people in your immediate vicinity or that you relate to in your circles of influence. It's okay to pray for things that you just want that are not going the way you want. If you want to pray that your body retains less food or that you get back to work soon or just things that are simple, it's fine to pray for those things. But I want to encourage you to pray for those things simply and directly and immediately and for the first 25 seconds. And then God has heard them and let them go and focus on what you think Jesus' prayer request for you would be. What he wants to do in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your character, in your family, in your relationships, in your devotion to him, in your reading of scripture, all those things. Focus your prayer on that and how he wants your faith to go forward in both word and action to bring the fragrance and message of Christ to your neighbors and to pray for the true good of your neighbors in all respects. I'll start and then you can pray and then Nicole close us and play into the next song. God, um, in this time that's different than others and yet the same in many ways, we, we need certain things from you. Your word says that we shouldn't worry because you know every sparrow, every hair on our head. You clothe the lilies of the valley better than any monarch, even though they're here for just one day. And so we don't have to worry. And so we lift up all the things that are part of our worries to you, our work and our life and our health and our children and our relationships and our everything that's in our hands and in our world that we want to enjoy and that we don't want to suffer. And we also lift up to you all the things that are more needful of our soul, that even though our body is wasting away, that our, our spirit would be renewed day by day, that we would be able to count our, all of our sufferings as light in momentary trials when compared to your glory, that we would long to share the gospel and your message of life and love with others in ways that they can hear it and understand it. We pray that you would give us favor with people who would naturally mistrust us and disfavor us. We pray that you would show us how you want to use us in our city and among our neighbors. We want to repent of the things that we have self-justified and that we think we're right about that we shouldn't be behaving that way. We want to restore the relationships that might be hard to restore. We pray that you do the work, Holy Spirit, of turning the hearts of fathers and mothers to each other and to their children and the hearts of children to their parents. As we all pray our particular requests, God, please work in us. We need you. And we believe our neighbors do as well. Hear our prayers.
God, I pray that our hearts would be lifted towards you. That all of the wants and desires that we have, all of the pulls towards worldliness, all the desires to be satisfied by things that were never meant to satisfy us fully. That we would lift and offer those things back to you, God. And that our our joy would be found fully and abundantly in you. That you would make us more and more like your son every day. That we would receive the gift of holiness that you've given to us. And that we would walk in the godliness that you desire for us by the power of your spirit. So this next little section we're going to focus on people who are more than normally responsible to serve us in the present moment and people who are more than normally 
affected by the present moment. So more than normally responsible would be, would be like our local, state, and federal government, our police officers, our our, federal, our local and federal bureaucrats, our, our county board, people like that, that pray that they would do justice, that they would have wisdom and prudence in their actions, that they would act within their power, but use their given power and responsibility rightly for what needs to be done. But also people disproportionately affected, for example, people in service industries that have been laid off, um, people who own businesses that can't open or can't do normal business, people who are suffering inordinately because of the present moment. Um, let's focus on that, the attitude of our city and country. Um, people, for example, the news media have an enormous responsibility to report the truth and to do it nonpartisanly. In a moment like this, it's a very difficult job with all kinds of different pressures on you. And so please, just there's lots of people praying, so let, let God kind of bring to mind in your intuition what he would want you to pray for, and then just pray for that for a couple sentences, and then just Listen again to what your intuition, what the Lord might bring in, what your own intuition might produce, and then just pray your way through that for the next few minutes. Father, as we try to open our hearts to the people that we should support in prayer, we pray for those who are inordinately responsible, fire and police, bureaucrats and administrators, people in government and responsible for legislation, our executive officers like governor and president, and our county board, all these sorts of folks. We pray for them. And we also pray for the people who are inordinately negatively affected, like business owners and immigrants and people who have worked in the service sector and are laid off right now. Um, we, we pray for businesses that have to manufacture something different right now. We pray that you would help them to serve others in doing so and for it to produce an honest profit for them to live on. We pray, God, that you would help us and bring to mind now, Holy Spirit, please lead us in how we should pray because we want to pray for all the things that you care about and want us to support. We pray in Christ's name.
I specifically pray that you would give them courage to act, uh, to act in courage and in conviction of what is true. And I pray, Lord, that they would be, uh, that they would have strength in that, Lord. There are a lot of people who have to make a lot of difficult decisions, and no matter what they decide, they will make somebody upset. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give them courage and strength. And Lord, we pray that they would experience your presence with them. And that those who are Christians would rest in the peace, knowing that you are with them every step that they take and that your spirit is empowering them and guiding them. And for those who are not Christians, who do not know you, Lord, we pray that you would use this time to make yourself known to them. As the darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's then I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's then. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. and lives and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. And be another in the fire. Standing next to me and be another in the waters holding back the seas and should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be be another in the fire standing to me and be another in the waters holding back the seas should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be The last group that we're going to pray for tonight is stuff related to High Point and the spiritual movement that we're involved in. So this would be praying for our elders and staff. This would be praying for the character and the faith of the people of High Point. This would be praying for our church's mission and our mission partners, um, especially in that context, our global mission partners. Um, the, uh, 
the, the issues related to COVID-19 are global, and most of our mission partners are affected by it in some way or another. We have some mission partners in the country of origin. There's all kinds of stuff going around there. Um, Europe is hit fairly hard. The um, uh, Eric Hesse and Miriam are mission partners in Berlin. And uh, we have friends in Sweden. All over the world we have mission partners, so please pray for them. And then um, please pray for our church's sacrificial generosity in our financial giving, in our prayer for other churches, in our moral support of other churches, and in our, our use of our funds to support other ministries that we make the right choices and that we make wise, prudent, and yet generous choices. And um, also, if you get done praying for that stuff— do pray for the spiritual movement we're a part of also then moves out to other churches that believe the gospel and that are trying to do the work of Jesus in the city like Metro Believers and Iglesia uh, Restoracion Vida, the Latino church that meets here, the Pedro is the pastor of, and Lighthouse Church and City Church and um, all these different churches, the Faith Place that we've been in partnership and that we're trying to spread the gospel with. So um, please pray for the mo- spiritual movement that we're a part of as God brings stuff to your mind. Father, we, we pray that you would— um, reveal in us your, the image that you create in Ephesians 3, 4, and 5, that we would be one body, like, just like a body is, is bound together in one organism, that you would make us one, one thing, one body, fully committed to the gospel, built up in the faith, mature in who we are, growing in godliness, living out what it means to be created in your image, redeemed by Christ, filled and empowered by the Spirit. We pray that it would affect our marriages and our families and all the different dynamics, that we would be a multi-ethnic church, a multicultural church, an international church, a church that is a distinct local unit and yet is in vital union with other churches that believe the gospel. Serving you in all the ways that we can in the city, we pray that it would have a vibrant witness. So like it says in 1 Thessalonians, that the word rang out from us, And our faith went everywhere. Father, help us to to pray and to ask you to do what you want to do in and through us.
God, what keeps coming to mind to me in this time is from Ephesians. The, the work that you did in that church and the work that we've seen you doing in our church of breaking down dividing walls of hostility and bonding us to one another through the power of Christ and the power of the gospel. God, I pray that you would continue to do that work in our church, in small groups in our church, in families in our church. Among churches in Madison. So that God, that people would know that we belong to you because of our love for one another. So Lord, I, yeah, I pray for that, that you would continue to grow these things. And that we would be able to see you do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. God, we pray for that. Lord, we are thankful for your faithfulness to us. We're thankful that you have heard these prayers that we've lifted to you, Lord, that you hear us now. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the gift of salvation that he has given to us, to those who believe, who repent, and who believe, God. Thank you that we can have that relationship with you now, Lord. We praise you for that. We're so grateful. We lift these things to you. In Christ's name. Let's sing this last song together. Let's rejoice in God's faithfulness to us. And let's celebrate the work that he has done and that he promises that he will continue to do until the day of Christ Jesus.
this refrain that we've ended uh, all of our services uh, most of our services during this um, time of, of live streaming and um, we pray that this would be the, the postures of our heart and that it would reflect um, how we are seeking after God in this season and that we pray that these words would be true of us God of this time I just want to encourage you during this time where we're kind of cooped up, this is a great time to use this to either start or restart or become more disciplined in our, um, our disciplines of personal devotions, of reading scripture and praying and, and talking to God and growing in our devotion to him. I, I hope that you'll take a little bit of time each day and read a portion of scripture and to talk to God about what he wants to do in and through you and how much you appreciate what he's doing in your life. So let's, let's end with prayer together out of um, some verses in Ephesians chapter 4. God, we pray that you'd help us to speak the truth and love to each other and to you in prayer so that we'll grow and become in every respect mature, the mature body of him who is the head, which is Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up as each part does its work. We pray, God, that you would help us to live a life worthy of the calling that we've received in Christ. That we would be completely humble and gentle. That we'd be patient. That we'd be bearing with one another in love. Whether with our governors, whether it's other people in the shopping stores, our grocery stores, or parking lots. That we'd make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace because we recognize together, all of us, that there is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to one hope when we were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace as long as this lasts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for coming. And close your browser in peace.